The movie begins with a teenager named Reese in a small room full of telephones on the walls. Suddenly, one of them, which has a sticky note on it, begins to ring. Reese picks up the phone call and hears an automated voice, which congratulates her on getting a royal flush. As she tries to get a grasp of what's going on, other telephones also start ringing, and they all say the same thing. All of a sudden, water begins to pour out of the telephones and starts filling up the room. Weird, I've had this exact dream before. Just then, Reese points her attention upwards and sees a toilet attached to the ceiling. Realizing that she has to flush the toilet, she begins to climb the wall with the help of the telephones. However, she is unable to locate the toilet handle. Thinking that she is going to drown if she doesn't do anything, Reese calms down and reads the number on the sticky note from earlier. Luckily, an idea strikes her mind, and with little time on her hands, Reese swims back down and uses one of the telephones to dial the number. Her plan works, and the telephone reveals a secret compartment, which contains the missing toilet handle. Reese rushes back to the top and fixes the handle onto the toilet. She then flushes it, which in turn drains all the water out of the room, hence saving her life. If you're doing a telephone puzzle and you get handed a number and you don't think to dial that number on the telephone, you you deserve to drown. <laughs> However, a few seconds later, it turns out that the whole experience was only a virtual reality game. Reese takes off her VR headset, and it's revealed that she is actually in an esports center surrounded by other VR and professional gamers. Later, she arrives home and has dinner with her single father, Chris. It is clear that the two are very close, as Reese lost her mother at a very young age. Out of the blue, the room light begins to flicker and short circuits. Then, we are shown a montage of different electrical outputs throughout the city, which also gets to destroyed in the same fashion. For some reason, everything that runs on electricity is imploding. Back inside the house, Chris thinks nothing of it and assumes that the city is going through a normal power outage. However, Reese can't get a signal and is disconnected from the outside world. Unfortunately, due to the ongoing short circuits, Reese's computer setup also goes up in flames. She somehow manages to put the fire out but is unsuccessful in saving her computer. Later, in the living room, Chris lights a lantern and tells his daughter that this blackout was a much needed break for her to get off of her devices. True dad, Chris. The two then look at some old photos on her iPad. Oh, okay, well. And reminisce about the times when Reese's mom was alive. Soon, they fall asleep on the couch. In the middle of the night, Reese hears a strange sound coming from their warehouse and decides to inspect it. Without waking her father up, she slowly makes her way out with a lantern and then proceeds into the warehouse. There, she finds a book called Radio Flash, which is another term for electromagnetic pulse or an EMP. As Reese looks around the place, we get to know that the warehouse was actually her grandpa. Franks, who left to live in the mountains a few years back. After a while, Reese unveils a cloth blanket on the table, which turns out to have a dismantled radio station beneath it. Hoping to get some answers from Frank, she skillfully puts together the parts and connects the radio successfully. She then turns on the device and calls her grandfather, who replies a few seconds later. It turns out that Frank is also very concerned about the power outage, which he calls apocalyptic. According to him, almost the entire western part of the United States has been affected by this mysterious outage. He he guesses that it might have something to do with an electromagnetic pulse attack. Frank then asks for Chris, but learns that he is already asleep. So, he instructs Reese to summon him to the radio the next morning, as they have very little time left. He wants the father-daughter duo to immediately leave their home and join him in the mountains, as he has plenty of supplies stocked there. Before ending the call, Frank guides Reese to a map and a mobile radio, which will aid them in their journey. The radio, however, will only work once they are in a five-mile radius from Frank. All of this indicates that he had already prepared for this event way back in the past. Reese obliges, and the very next morning she informs her father of the situation. At first, Chris refuses to go to Frank's place, claiming that he is a lunatic. But when his daughter keeps on insisting, he decides to at least call the old man. Shortly after, the two head to the warehouse and Reese starts the radio transmission. After she leaves, Chris and Frank begin their conversation. At first, the old man proceeds to explain the truth behind the power outage. He reveals that everything that is happening is the effect of an EMP, which will soon cause chaos and bedlam in in every part of the states. He also claims that supplies and tools will become scarce in just three days' time, so living in the mountains with him is the only safe option. Hearing all this, Chris is finally convinced, and he makes up his mind to leave immediately. After a while, he along with Reese start packing their belongings, while the situation outside begins to worsen. Police and civilians are at each other's necks because of the prolonged power outage. No one knows what is happening or when it will end. Popo, how am I supposed to figure out how I feel about this unless I can uh, make a TikTok out of it, you know? 
Meanwhile, Chris and Reese hop in their car and start their journey. On their way, they stop by the only open supermarket in the area to get some supplies. However, when they witness extensive violence among people for common supplies, like water and food, they quickly retreat. As they leave the place, we are shown that thousands of other people are also trying to get out of the city. In the next scene, the father-daughter duo is forced to stop on a bridge because of an accident blocking the highway. A lady has seemingly lost her life, and Reese witnesses this. A few hours later, the tension in the bridge reaches a boiling point, and an impatient man rams his vehicle into another. This opens up the road, so Chris and Reese quickly rush back to their vehicle and continue their journey. Later that night, Reese wakes up and finds out that they have missed the intersection and are going the wrong way. This distracts Chris, and he momentarily takes his eyes off the road. The split second turns out to be costly, as he loses control of the car and crashes it into the nearby woods. Boy, what I would do for a movie like this that skips the cliches, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the next morning, Reese is woken up by her father, who is relieved to see her without any injuries. However, Chris seems to have hit his head and is bleeding a little. The two then decide to follow a nearby river to get to Frank's location, as it will save them a considerable amount of time. Elsewhere, Frank starts to get concerned about the duo, as they were already supposed to have arrived by the morning. In the meantime, Chris is having a hard time walking, so Reese suggests they rest for a while. They stop by a nearby waterfall and fill up on water. There, Reese finds out that her father has a severe bruise on his back, and also has a deep cut on his arm. She immediately starts treating his wounds, despite Chris stating that he will be fine. After a while, they resume their journey, but Chris becomes weaker by the minute and eventually collapses. Before losing consciousness, he instructs his daughter to call for help. Hence, without wasting any time, Reese runs through the forest, where she fortunately finds a barn and a farmer named Glenn. Seeing the distressed girl, he quickly springs into action and brings Chris back home in his car. Unfortunately, despite every medical intervention, Chris doesn't regain consciousness and eventually stops breathing. Reese is devastated and heartbroken as her only parent is now gone. The same night, she and Glenn bury him in the field and they pay their respects. The next day, Glenn decides to help Reese get to her grandfather's place, and soon, they begin their journey in his trailer. On the other hand, Frank is tired of waiting, so he decides to go look for Chris and Reese himself. A few hours later, he comes across their crash site and a piece of bloody cloth on the floor beside the car. Frank then follows the road and finds the farm where Reese was previously located. He goes to see if anyone is home, but surprisingly sees blood on the sofa. Suspicious, he breaks in and starts inspecting the place. After not finding anything, he takes a good look at Glenn's photo and then heads off. Off. Outside, he notices the recently used shovel, Chris's clothes, and also his burial site. Frank now knows that Chris is dead, but he doesn't have time to grieve, as Reese, his granddaughter, is still missing. Elsewhere, along the way, Glenn notices a man on the side of the road asking for help. For safety precautions, he tells Reese to quickly go to the back of the trailer, fearing the man might be up to something shady. Glenn's worst fear comes true as the man pulls a gun on him and shoots him dead. The unnamed man then gets into the trailer and drives off, with a traumatized Reese still inside of it. After a while, he stops by a car repair shop and sneaks in to steal gasoline from a truck. All of a sudden, the man gets shot by a hunter, and Reese uses this opportunity to flee. Plot twist, Reese is in VR again, and she's playing Fortnite. However, not long after, she gets caught by the same hunter who puts a bag over her head. When she finally opens her eyes, she is greeted by a strange old woman who claims that Reese trespassed on her property. So now, she will have to pay for it. Meanwhile, Frank finds Glenn's dead body and identifies him as the man from the photo. This makes him worry even more for Reese, and so he continues to search for answers. On the other hand, during dinner, the old woman introduces Reese to her family. Her son is Billy, the hunter from earlier, and Quinn, her shy and troubled grandson. It turns out Billy always beats and humiliates his son for no apparent reason. After the introductions, Reese explains the course of events on how she got here. She also asserts that she cannot stay any longer, as she has to get to her grandpa's as soon as possible. However, the old woman feels no sympathy and doesn't let her leave. Instead, she forces her to stay in the attic for the night. Left with no choice, Reese heads to the attic, but has no intention of spending the night. In an attempt to escape, she sneaks to the main door while everyone is asleep. She then opens the lock, but the old woman hears it and immediately sends Billy after her. An intense chase ensues, but the teenager is eventually caught and brought back home by the menacing hunter. When Reese comes to her senses, she finds herself tied up inside a bag which is hanging on a tree. Just then, a large bear approaches her and tries to tear open the bag. It appears as if the teenager is about to bite the dust, but Billy arrives there in the nick of time and shoots the bear down. It turns out Reese was simply used as bait to lure the giant beast. After the close encounter, she is taken to a small storeroom where Billy leaves her for a week. But 
One day, he takes her out, and the old woman tries to convince her to stay and become a partner to one of her sons. However, Reese responds that she would rather be inside the storeroom than be with those maniacs. Her wish is fulfilled, as the enraged woman orders Reese to be thrown back into the storeroom. This time, both her hands and feet are tied. Desperate to escape, Reese manages to cut open the rope on her hands and finally unties herself. However, she cannot figure out a plan to escape. Just then, she notices Quinn peeking at her and thinks of a plan. Reese knows that he feels sympathy for her, so she decides to exploit this weakness of his. She starts coercing him for help, and surprisingly, Quinn, who is fed up with the constant abuse from both his grandma and his father, agrees. Not to mention he's simping just a little bit. He lets her out of the storeroom, and without further ado, they escape the compound together and run through the night. The next morning, Billy finds out that both of them have fled and immediately begins his search. He follows their footsteps and broken branches, slowly but surely catching up to them. On the other hand, Quinn and Reese bond together and eat berries as they have run far off from the compound. A few moments later, they reach a cliff where Quinn nearly falls to his death, but Reese manages to save him. They then come across a log, which acts as a bridge, and they slowly make their way across it. All of a sudden, Billy spots them from afar and takes a shot, which luckily doesn't connect. Terrified, the teenagers start running and they come across a shallow lake. Realizing that they cannot outrun Billy, they submerge themselves in the water to hide. After the hunter crosses them, Reese and Quinn get out from the lake and flee in the opposite direction. However, as Billy is a seasoned hunter, he notices them from behind his back and tails them again. Eventually, he catches up to them, so Quinn decides to take him on while Reese hides behind a rock. As the two tussle, Billy's gun falls in front of Reese, but she hesitates to use it. However, when she realizes that Quinn will be beaten to death if she doesn't take any action, Reese gains the confidence to pick up the gun. She aims for Billy and finishes him off with one clean shot. But surprisingly, it is revealed that it was actually her grandpa Frank who fired the gun and saved the teenagers. He arrived at the place after hearing the gunshots. Relieved, Reese runs to her grandpa and hugs him tightly while tearing up. The scene cuts to some time in the future, where both Reese and Quinn live with Frank and do activities as a family. The world is still suffering from the after effects of the EMP, but here in the mountains, everything that is required to survive is available in abundance. The movie ends as Quinn opens Reese's laptop and notices several messages from her friends, indicating that the power outage problem is finally coming to an end. Finally, we can return to our postmodern hellscape and forget about everything we've learned. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.